Paulina here, and uh, real quick, I just wanted to film my TBR for the sp Spookathon. Yes, that's the name of it. Um, the Spookathon is a readathon hosted by Books and Lala, and I think others. I'll try to remember to put all the links and stuff down below. It runs from the 15th to the 21st, I believe. Yeah. So a full week of just reading spooky books and getting into the October spirit of like Halloween and whatnot. Um, so yes, I have a couple books here um, that are kind of my tentative TBR and we'll see how that goes. Uh, today is Friday, the readathon starts Monday, so there's one book on here that I'm in the middle of and I'm going to put it here for one of the challenges, but if I finish it by then I have two backups um, for that challenge. <laughs> uh, but the first challenge is to read a thriller. So I think I'm going to stick with uh, A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. Uh, yesterday? Was it yesterday? No, uh, the day before yesterday. The other day I was at Target and I was bored. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to go like on my phone and stuff, so I was like, I'm going to pick up a new book. But it needs to be like a cheap book. And I didn't know that the new like Anna Kendrick Blake Lively movie that's coming out was actually a book first. And I was like, oh, for fun I'm going to start reading it. And then I ended up reading like the first five chapters or something. Oh, the first seven chapters. And it's actually pretty addictive. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is basically the story about this woman, um, Stephanie, and she meets this, like, fellow mom, like, uh, that has a kid that goes to the same school that her kid goes to, and they kind of start this friendship where she does favors for her and stuff because she's, like, a stay-at-home mom, and the other mom, her name is Emily, she, like, works and she's like the head of this like big fashion company and stuff and then um one day Emily goes missing and it's kind of like the mystery of trying to solve what happened to her where did she go like is she okay all of that um and people are being very weird about it and all of that stuff so far and the first at least the first seven chapters that I read I see that the format is going to start changing at the eighth chapter is their blog posts and she posts like in this blog for moms kind of thing, and then I think it alternates between that format and then just following her outside of that. Um, yeah, so that was my long-winded thing for this. It still has, like, the ugly sticker, because I tried to take it off, and it was not going well. So, yes, I'm excited to get through this, and I feel like it should be a quick read, because I just intended on reading the first chapter and ended up going through, like, the first chunk of it. So, I'm gonna finish this one for the thriller challenge. The second challenge is to read a book with purple on the cover. And the thing is, none of these have purple. Um, I think the closest that I'm going to get is like the kind of blood, like purple, red, burgundy color that's on here. This is majorly cheating, but I'm going to do it. Um, and for that, I'm going to use Carrie by Stephen King. Um, I've read this book before when I was in high school, and then to start my read through in order of all Stephen King's books. I'm going to reread Carrie, but to kind of switch it up, I'm going to read it for the first time in Spanish. Uh, I'm starting, like, I know how to read in Spanish in form of, like, text messages with my family and stuff, but I've never attempted to read a full-length novel in Spanish. So, like, you know, it's there. It's in a different language. <laughs> and, uh, I'm hoping to just start a thing where I start read, um, reading my favorite books that I've already read in English and use that to help me assimilate reading books in Spanish. So this one is what I'm excited for. Uh, everyone kind of knows what this is, Carrie. It's iconic. Uh, telekinetic girl. Problems with menstruation and proms. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited to read this and then watch the original film because I have never done that before. And so I'm also using this for the challenge of read a book that is set in a different time period because this is like in the 50s or something, I believe. I could be wrong, but yes. So definitely not in this current time period. <laughs> so we have that. Um, those are the first three challenges. Oh, okay. A book with a spooky word in the title. And again, I am minorly cheating. I have, I'm in the middle, uh, I'm about, well not in the middle, I'm 50 pages into The Silver Eyes, uh, by Scott Cawthorn and Kira Breed Risley. Uh, this is a Five Nights at Freddy's book, so I'm using Nights. It's kind of in the title, like it's a subtitle thing, I don't know. But it's on the cover, so I feel like it applies. <laughs> um, and this, for anyone who is a fan of the Five Nights at Freddy's, like, games, like not even necessarily playing it, but like the lore, watching people play it learning about it, all that stuff. This 
I'm only 50 pages into, but it feels like a five-star read already. It's it's really surprisingly well-written, because I've heard so many people, like, bag on how bad this book is. Um, and it's basically about this girl, um, Charlie, yeah, who, uh, she, like, when she was a kid, something bad happened at one of the Freddy Fazbear pizzerias, and her and her friends kind of, like, stopped speaking to each other and moved away, and then now, like, ten years later or something, they're all teenagers, they're all in high school, and they kind of regroup for the ten-year anniversary of, like, whatever happened, this terrible event that they're kind of alluding to, and since then, the Freddy Fazbear's uh, pizzeria has been closed down, but they decide to go to it for, I guess, all time's sake, and go to the abandoned, like, you know, building and stuff, and it kind of takes off from there, and what happens to them while they're in there, and it's so good so far, I'm feeling it, and I'm excited to finally just kind of dive into it more, because I haven't really probably been able to get into it as much as I've been wanting to, because of school work and all that jazz. So, this one is definitely one I hope to get through. Um, yeah, and I think those all the challenges besides the last one which is read a book with pictures in it now this is the one where I have given myself a couple options just because uh, I am a mood reader and I don't want to have like completely locked down so I I'm giving myself options for this challenge so I'm currently almost halfway or like around halfway through uh, Coraline by Neil Gaiman this is my first time reading through it but I'm very familiar with the story already because I've seen the movie like 5,000 times um, but, like I said, I still have the rest of today, Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday before the readathon starts, so I'm kind of hoping that by then I'll be done with this book, especially since it's so short, I'm already halfway through. Uh, but it does have pictures, so hopefully, you know, I'll be done by then, but if not, this will apply. Like, do you see that? That's so creepy. Um, so we have this. If I'm done by that point, I have three options of what I would want to choose to fill this. Um, I have John Winchester's journal. Uh, by Alex Irvine. This is made from, like, the supernatural John Winchester's journal that, like, he has there, and this has, like, photographs and, like, different, like, drawings and stuff throughout. So I think it definitely applies, and I'm excited to dive into it, because it also kind of has, like, a small narrative so you can see where John was in his life at that point. There's, there's parts of him talking about when he was still, like, with Mary and all that stuff, and I've always wanted to read this. Didn't own it for a long time until, like, last year or the year before, and so... Maybe this is the time to get into it. I always watch Supernatural around this time of the year. Um, so maybe I'll get into that for this one. Uh, or option number two. Um, I have Night Film by Marcia Pessel. I found this at a Dollar Tree like a year or two ago. And I was so excited because so many people say so many great things about this. Um, and it's a mixed media like formatted book. Uh, but I got it and I haven't read it, and I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet, because I am I have been really excited to, because it's, it's a beautiful book, and I'm sure I'm gonna love it, and it's, like, about, you know, a guy who makes cult classic horror films and stuff, and his daughter, and somebody trying to kill her, I think, uh, but as you can see, it has photographs in there, or if I get bogged down with stuff, or if I'm just in the mood, um, I forgot to bring it, and now I'm too lazy to go get it. <laughs> Um, I have volume one of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's spooky. It uh, takes place, I think, in the 1950s, so it would also apply for that challenge, maybe even further back, um, for the challenge of read a book in the different time setting period thing. Um, and it's also, like, creepy, and it's also kind of the perfect time for it because it's getting turned into a Netflix series soon. So I'm excited to pick that one up, and I'm probably going to pick it up sometime this month anyway, because at the end of the month the first season comes out, but it would be appropriate and it'd be quick for like a readathon, so it depends, whatever I'm in the mood for. So we have four books for that challenge, but hopefully Coraline will already be done by the time that the readathon starts. But yes, these are all the books that I hope to get through um, during the week of Scoopathon. So yes, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you'd like to see more of my face and my books, and see if I stuck to this TBR at all by the end of the week. <laughs> Bye!